Hey there, uh, Miss Graham here. This is your syllabus video for your theater class for the 2020-2021 school year. If you are watching this video, it's because you missed the first day of school, you need to review for that syllabus quiz, or you're just new to theater or new to diet, recently had a schedule change, etc. We're gonna go through a couple of really key and important pieces of information here in this syllabus video, so please be sure to stay tuned for the entire thing. There are a couple of things that are only included in the syllabus that apply to in-person learning. I wanted to make sure that I took the time to cover them now, so that on the off chance that we are all together before the end of the 2021 school year, that we're all kind of on the same page as far as expectations, and we're all caught up as far as things we need to know. So that being said, let's go ahead and just jump straight into the syllabus. So the syllabus that you should see on your screen at this point in time is an example syllabus. Uh, right now I'm using the syllabus for our Theater Arts 1, 2, and 3 class, although almost all the information that we are covering in every single class stays pretty consistent, stays pretty much the same, so not a whole lot is going to change. Um, on the first page of each of your syllabi, you're gonna find a lot of key information specific to your class. So know that even though in this video we're covering only information from uh, one specific class on the screen, your syllabus for your class is gonna cover information pertinent to your class. If you are not currently in the Theater Arts 1, 2, or 3 class, do not worry about this particular Google Classroom code. Your code will be in your syllabus. Each of your syllabi begins with a quote from a different theater artist. We're going to begin with the one you see here on your screen, a quote from Ms. Viola Spolin. Spolin is well known for her work in theater improvisation and theory. Her very popular book, Improvisation for the Theater, is one that I use to help build and shape our improvisation technique in this class. Spolin is also well known here in Chicago as a former professor at Northwestern University and by her son, Paul Spolin, who used her improv techniques and workshops as a foundation to create the Second City Theater and School right here in Chicago. The quote you'll find here on your screen reads, were they acting? Get them to play. And this quote is essential to our work in class because play is a major part of theater and this course. We perform plays on stage, we play characters on, in those plays, and much of the time to outsiders it'll look like we're just playing. Something important to remember that in this course we play hard and we play fair. The second course, and the one that you'll find in your syllabus if you are part of our theater production class, is one from Miss Stella Adler. Stella Adler is well known for her acting method and teaching, and having created her own form of method acting. Stella Adler studied with Stanislavski, aka the father of method acting, and Lee Strasberg, using their teachings to create her own acting technique. Adler then used these teachings to found the Stella Adler Studio of Acting in New York City. Though Stella Adler was well known for her teachings and direction, the quote I'm going to share with you very uniquely applies to theater production and design. The word theater comes from the Greeks. It means the seeing place. It is the place people come to see the truth about life and the social situation. Now, this is essential to keep in mind when designing theater, because not only is theater a reflection of life and storytelling, theater is also a reflection of social, political, and cultural climate under which it is produced. We have to remember that theater is an art form with intentional meaning. So jumping into the information for this syllabus that we found on the first page, you'll find your course description here on the first page. You'll find information and contact information for me, uh, and then you'll find your specific Google Classroom class code. Again, this particular example right here is just for Theater Arts 1, 2, and 3. This is not the Google Classroom code that you need to be a part of if you are not in period eight class. Here, jumping into the next section here, um, you've got your course materials. And again, this is more specific to in-person, um, but if we are in-person, you're gonna need the following things. You're gonna need a spiral bound notebook. You're gonna need a highlighter, a pen and pencil for class every day. Um, I'm gonna provide you with a copy of Theater Art in Action, which is our textbook. And then we'll also use various scripts and different materials throughout class. My expectations of you, this applies to both in-person and remote learning. Um, safety and respect are my two really big things. As far as safety is concerned, uh, students in our class have to help maintain a safe learning environment at all times. So this means not just physical, but also as well as emotional safety. Any failure to help ensure that safety of our classroom environment and, and culture kind of destroys any attempt that we might have in creating original work. We want to do everything in our power to make sure that we're maintaining a safe and welcoming classroom space. That being said, sometimes the topics that we cover are mature. Sometimes they might include mature topics, mature language, um, explicit language, or even mature characters. 
Even though mature language is used in our text, it's not the language that we use to speak to peers or adults. Which brings me to my next point, and my next expectation, respect. This course cannot happen without a mutual respect for each other, our space, and of the work. Your role in maintaining an essential classroom environment is important. It is essential. Make sure you're respecting your fellow students and me through your language, actions, and intentions. This includes making sure you're not using foul language, laughing or inappropriately, or causing anyone physical emotional harm. We all know how it feels to stand up in front of our peers and to have someone chuckle or laugh. It doesn't feel great. Don't do it to other people. Cell phones. This is a huge, huge thing for me. This is like a very big hot button issue, so please do not have your phones on during a performance. Don't be on your phone. It's rude. It's disrespectful. And the person who's on stage, who's right in front of you, can see it and they do notice it. It comes off as mad disrespectful and it's absolutely not a space that you want to be in when you're performing. That said, during the regular everyday class, again, this is more specific to in-person learning, uh, and but this is our school-wide policy. If your phone is out, you receive a warning. If your phone is out a second time, it is confiscated and it will be held on by me until the remainder of the block. You will get it back at the end of the block, um, just as a heads up. Integrity. Make sure that you're keeping all of your graded work. Don't throw away assignments until everything is kind of finalized in gradebook. Um, you're going to need to have that paper copy with the grade written on it for me to make any changes. Plagiarism in any form won't be tolerated. You'll receive a zero for the assignment as well as parents and admin being contacted as a result. In the arts world, plagiarism also refers to copyright infringement, which is illegal. It's not an area that we want to be getting into, so making sure that you're creating original work. When it comes to materials, and this again a little bit refers to more in-person learning, but the general overview, show up, be present, do the work, and be prepared to get to work. When the work is communal, it just means that we all have to show up on time together. If you're sharing materials, that means that we all have to work together to make sure that we're restoring the space. We're putting it back exactly as, as we found it, and we're prepared to take notes and take action. On time means that you're in the space, ready to start when that bell rings. Moving right along to grading. Now this is an update for the 2020-2021 school year. So make sure that even if you've had me in class before that you're listening up. Uh, I've got some links here in the syllabus that kind of go through specifically setting up your CPS account. If you forgot your password, these are the links that you should follow. If you want to check your student grades, I've also included a link here to your student portal so that you'll be able to access that as well. It is a live link. When it comes to the grading scale, just think of it like this. A four is an A, a three is a B, a two is a C, a one is a D, and a zero is an F. That's the really simple way to put it. I've also outlined in my syllabus what exactly a 3.5 means, what does a four mean, with percentages and the corresponding letter grades. Feel free to look over that at your perusal. Additionally, something that has also changed for the 2020-21 school year is that our benchmarks are now worth 60% of your grade. Your homework is worth 20% of your grade and your classwork is also worth 20% of your grade. So make sure that you're keeping up to date not only with those benchmarks, but with those homeworks and homework assignments and classwork pieces. My absence policy. This absence policy, as a full disclaimer, is explicitly tied to in-person learning. We're going to go over the absence policy for remote learning at the end of this video. But again, just to make sure that we're all on the same page and we all have access to the same information. Um, the absence policy for my theater class. This is a class community and we work in groups as a class every single day, which means that it's only fair if you are here for the work. Each week, you're going to be graded on your theater etiquette based on your participation in class that week. And you can't get those points if you're not here and you're not jumping in. To begin, one, yes, we did something important while you were absent. It is your responsibility to check with me the day you return to class to find out what you missed. When in doubt, check Google Classroom. Two, performances and presentations. The show will go on. If you know that you're going to be absent the day of a performance, you must communicate this in advance to your scene partner and to me so that another date can be arranged. I'm not going to schedule you for a performance on a day that you know you're not going to be in class. And if you wake up sick the morning of a presentation or performance, you need to communicate your absence with me prior to class. Unexcused absences on a performance day without prior communication to the instructor can't be made up. Meaning that if you miss a benchmark I'm not, and you haven't communicated, it cannot be made up. 
The show will go on without you, and someone else will be asked to step in for your performance. Now, number three. If the absence was excused, great. You have a day to make up the excused absence, to make up that excused work. After that day, any missing assignments will be accepted with late penalties. If the absence is unexcused, only benchmarks can be made up with a late penalty. My email submission policy. You are more than welcome to email me assignments. If you need to email an assignment to me prior to the start of class, feel free to email it to me before that date or before that digital deadline. If tech issues happen, you are more than welcome to handwrite your assignment. Five, any assignment or benchmark you are absent for will be entered as a zero until it is turned in. Late work and other policies. Now, a lot of this is gonna be a review for most of you, but it is really important that we reiterate it for remote learning. Late work is accepted for one point off. In other words, there's no way to get full credit on a late assignment. Benchmarks and other assessments will be accepted for resubmission, which are eligible for full credit if turned in on time. Meaning that you can turn in an assignment as many times as you'd like until the end of the quarter, but if it's not turned in on time, earning an A simply is impossible. That being said, life happens, and if you're having an issue in or out of school, have a huge exam coming up for your history class, or realize you need more time to complete your best work for any other reason, email me and request an extension. You gotta come talk to me before that date or before that deadline for the extension to be considered. And don't come into class five minutes before class or five minutes before the digital deadline without your assignment and ask for an extension. I'm a reasonable adult. I'm a reasonable human being. I'm happy to help. I just need communication so that I know how I can best help. Something that's super important and also a professional boundary. Late work will be entered into Aspen when I get to it. If my work is not your priority, putting it into Aspen immediately is not mine. Do not repeatedly ask me to enter late work. Jumping forward to our remote learning addendum. Due to the current COVID-19 pandemic, please know that items within the syllabus are subject to change. Changes may include updates to district and school-wide guidelines, as well as state and local communication. Student and staff safety are my number one priority, and my changes will reflect that priority. Any communication regarding these changes will happen as early and as often as possible. I really appreciate your patience and cooperation right now. Required materials for remote learning. You're absolutely gonna need that school provided Chromebook or a personal laptop or desktop, essentially something with a keyboard that you can type on. You're gonna need to be regularly checking that school email. You're gonna need access to our Google Classroom and you're going to need access to some sort of note-taking space. This could be digital or physical, meaning you could take notes on your notes app on your phone you could make a running list on a Google Doc, or you could have a physical hard copy theater notebook. Some helpful materials for remote learning. I'd suggest getting a pair of headphones, potentially something with a microphone attachment, colored pencils or markers, notebook paper or a theater notebook, printer paper or a sketchbook. Jumping swiftly onto a remote learning absence policy. As of right now, this currently applies to quarter one, but please note that if our remote learning for the 2020-2021 school year extends, it will apply to further quarters as well. If you are missing class, it's gonna happen, but just make sure that you are making doing your best not to make it a habit and not to make it a pattern. If you've missed a live instructional class, please be sure to check in with me, Ms. Graham, and with the attendance office with Ms. Fleming Smith via email. Check your CPS email before hopping in. Respond to the Google Classroom notifications for our class. If there was a live class during our session, make sure that, that you watch that session before moving on to the next step. And finally, then you check in with me and ask what you missed. Pro tips and best practices. I'm gonna tell you right now everything that you need to know to get an A during remote learning. First thing, stay digitally organized. Make folders, title your documents. Don't stay stuck. If you've got a question, ask it. Your teachers, including me, are here to help you. Googling is gonna be your friend. I've found some of the best tech tips that I can find by simply Googling it or even looking up YouTube tutorials. Create a study space, somewhere that's quiet, away from your phone, and somewhere where you can be productive and not distracted. Be sure to check out the tech tips in the classwork tab of our Google Classroom. I'm gonna be posting extra videos, tutorials, and Google Chrome extensions there for your use. Do everything in your power to be flexible. I'm gonna do everything in my power to make sure that I'm prepared and flexible for y'all, and I'd appreciate if you extended the same courtesy to me. Follow the inner space guidelines. Be safe, be respectful, follow all directions,
be on task, be present, be on time, be prepared, play hard, and play fair. Finally, live instruction and on-camera expectations for my class. I need you to stay present during class as much as is humanly possible. I know that internet's gonna go out, things are gonna happen, but when you can, try and stay present for as long of class as possible. On-camera work is preferred, but not required for every class. Virtual backgrounds are encouraged. Feel free to also use an avatar or an emoji. Try to avoid on-camera field trips. If you need to move while in class, make sure that camera's off. Wear pants. The internet is forever. Assume that CPS and I are recording all classes. Make sure that everything below the waistline is covered. But if you need to come to class in your PJs, do what you need to can. I'm happy you showed up. If you're going to the restroom, toss a be right back in the chat just so we know where you went and I'm not trying to call on you if you're not actually there. I don't need to hear you eat. Make sure that your mic is turned off if you are having a snack or having a meal during class. Make sure that you're passing the mic so that we can hear from everybody in the space. And finally, during performances, presentations, and direct instruction, make sure that you're following our audience etiquette guidelines. Those are keep quiet, participate, stay, and appreciate with some applause. Finally, make sure that you complete that syllabus agreement. It's posted on Google Classroom or it's in, available in hard copy to you. Make sure you get that back to Ms. Graham as soon as possible. Make sure you review this video or at least the syllabus video with your parent. They've got to sign it too. Thank you so much for staying tuned to our syllabus video. I look forward to seeing you in class.